I'm Ian Marksell and this is PSP Master Tales. And I'm not going to dance. It's time to ask about the prince, the, the only one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So let's start with that. How did it happen that you started working with Prince? Well, remember earlier I was telling you how my my uh, education helped me in a lot of ways, and my experience as a t technician, as a tech tech engineer in studio helped me. That was one of the occasions because we started doing some renovation at Paisley Park. My friend Dave Hampton was brought in to like rejuvenate Paisley Park. They had some some uh, technical issues. So I went there as a technical advisor and I was going through all this equipment and stuff like that, helping them refurbish equipment, fix equipment, helping them find bugs in the studio and that kind of thing. So Prince was on tour, he was leading around. He was in a, on a musicology tour, this is 2004. So then he came back a couple of times, I met Prince and then he left again to finish the tour. And he finally finished the tour, he came back and he wanted to check out the studio and make sure everything was working. So I was around, so I started recording for him. He needed somebody to record, even though at that time, with Prince, he set him up in the studio, like piano, bass, everything was hooked up and he knew where around the studio he could record himself. So I would set him up and leave the room and I'd come back and there'd, there'd be this song with vocals and a whole band playing keyboards, guitar, bass, everything. The only thing I recorded was him playing drums. <laughs> which kind of blew me away because I knew he could play drums, but I didn't know how well he could play drums. He was just phenomenal on drums. So he played these songs with no click track, just looking at the lyrics on a piece of paper and he knew the whole arrangement in his head, complete with breaks and stops and breakdown sections. So he would just play to whatever music playing in his head, no click, no click, just straight playing. And he was phenomenal. I was like, wow, this guy can really play drums, you know? So that's, so he kind of took a liking to me. Then he found out I was from Trinidad and then he told me his first girlfriend was from Trinidad. I think she was a member of uh, Vanity Six. No, no, no. I was an original member of Vanity Six. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> it was Sweden Six, right? Thank you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. So there. Yeah, so. <laughs> so that was the connection. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny, you'd come in like uh, four o'clock in the afternoon and he wanted, he'd want you to record. So, you know, I'd go and set him up, record him playing drums. And leave the room and come back and it would be this complete song like wow what just happened <laughs> bass guitar keyboards and vocals background and then he'd have this whole song finished in a matter of hours it was just so effortless for him playing these instruments i think when i first started working with him he was testing me so he made me try to mic this piano, you know, uh, uh, Yamaha in the studio. So I was using all these mics and going through all these exotic mic pre's, trying to get a sound that he was happy with and kept making me do it over and over. And like, what, what is he looking for? And I thought it was sounding great. But then, you know, he walks over to the Yamaha motif and play, hit the piano on the Yamaha motif. I wanted to sound like that. <laughs> I'm like, already, you, have, you wanted to sound like a Sample and compressed keyboard sound. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was like one weird moment. Did he record on tape or on a computer? Yes. On tape. On tape. Hmm? Yeah, we're doing tape. 
we had installed some brand new, two brand new Studio A27s. Perfect. So he was recording on tape. He was old school. He did do a, some recording on Pro Tools later on after we became more more familiar. We, we had done this uh, portable Pro Tools rig for him that uh, he could take with him. So he he come out to LA and rent a house. And we had this mobile Pro Tools rig in a room. It would be like a studio away from Paisley Park. So I would, then I would record him playing bass and guitar and stuff like that and vocals. Then I, get, then I got to see him actually play all these instruments. He wasn't interested in modern technology. No, he was an old school tape, tape machine and console type person. That's what he was, he grew up with and that's what he was used to using. That's the Pro Tools was just extra stuff for him. But he liked the fast, the fact that it was a instantaneous location to parts of the song. And he was so, he was so dope with, with his musicianship that if I went back like a bar too early to punch him in, he's like, you don't have to give me so much space. I could come in like a beat before the pop punching him in and he would just pick it up and he'd be right on cue. Then I had to explain to him like, you know, most, most people are not like that. Most people need like two bars to, to feel, to get into. So, so I was like, Prince, you know, most people, need two bars. They don't just pick up like a bar before because he was so impatient. Like two bars is too long. He don't want to wait for two bars to go by. Or one bar even. It's one beat and he's playing. And he did it so effortlessly. He said, amazing, amazing musician. It was just like a second language to him or maybe his first language, really. It's just, and he just switched from instrument to instrument and just virtuoso and the guitar and then keyboard. I remember one time he had this keyboard musician that worked with him, Renato. He's a Brazilian cat, really, really, really great keyboard player. And he plays all that Latin stuff. I remember we recorded something and then he left and Prince didn't like it. And Prince went in and replayed the parts he had played, but played it better. I'm like, oh, wish crap, how do you do that? It's like, kiss, kill it. You do stuff like that all the time. Like if he didn't like how you, if you were a keyboard, I hate having to be a keyboard player for Prince because he you know you could, he'd come and play, play your part better than you could. <laughs> <laughs> You're a guitar player for Prince. Oh, that was tough too. But he would come take your guitar and then replay your parts better than you. Same thing with the bass player, same thing with the drummer. Nice. And, and that's really interesting because I've listened like, I don't know, like three or four times to Susan Rogers podcast on, it was recorded on tape up. Um, and I, I loved how she, she told about working with Prince as a sound engineer. And, she, uh, and as long as I remember, she told that like when he was recording vocals like in the 80s he always asked her to leave the you know to, to leave the room so he was recording on his own so it's interesting that now you are telling us that you've seen prince recording his vocals uh for the, when he when he recorded on tape I, he did the same thing to me i leave the room but he can operate Pro Tools, so one time I recorded him doing vocals in a bathroom at the Rio in Las Vegas. And that song won a Grammy for best R&B vocals. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Recorded, the feature yeah. Baby Mama, right? The Baby Mama, yeah. He recorded that in the bathroom at the Rio. <laughs> so, That's so can't make Oh, yeah. You cannot make it. It was a nice up. bathroom, but it, it was a, the fancier part of the real the Palazzo Suisse, which is called. Um, wow. It was a nice marble bathroom, marble walls, marble floor, heated tower racks. And an interesting note in the uh, 
in the suite next to him was Elton John. Elton John was staying. So he was staying in the suite next to him. These were, these were huge suites, like 2,000 square feet, two bedrooms, a formal dining room, a home theater room, and it had a grand piano in the living room. So they were not average hotel rooms. They were quite nice. Did it feel like a song that would win a Grammy? You felt right away well, that this song yeah. is very special? Yeah. When I first, when you, when I first recorded it, while he was singing, I was like, wow, this is a great song. But well, all his songs felt great, even if they weren't hits. They just felt, he had said, he was such a great songwriter that it all just flowed. You could just listen to the song from beginning to end, and it would just flow through this. It was like a journey. It would all just flow. He's such a great songwriter. So that was one of the ones when he was singing it. Because I recorded him. It was like one take. And that was a rough mix that I had done the night that I recorded the background vocals. And I left a CD for him to listen to. And he's like, okay, listen, you, somebody has a mixed it, but we ended up going with my rough mix. And he's like, no, I like like what you did better so i just went back and just printed it out again with the background vocals louder as hell in the <laughs> in the end of the song background vocals got really loud but i just recorded background vocals so i wanted him to hear what the background vocals sounded like so i mixed it a little bit louder with he ended up keeping it loud as hell so <laughs> but he won a grammy so he was he sat in a bathroom and recorded it The vocals. This is again, great. It's, <laughs> it's a great again, story. Yeah. yeah, again, it's like one of those things where it's just like one take where he just, where it's just me didn't record. Okay, roll it, and he just performed it. Capture the right emotion, the right energy, on just the first take. And that was it. It was like 15 minutes. And he wins a Grammy, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> and, and you know, he just recorded one take and that was it. And he left the room, probably went on stage and performed right after he recorded that song. Like one of those things. And how, how did you feel about Prince? Was it, you know, uh, intimidating working with him or you felt comfortable uh, while? <laughs> It was intimidating at first when I was, you know, but once I got used to him and he got used to me, it became a lot easier. Uh, he would uh, he would do these guitar solos and he had me punch him in on tape. So there was no undo button, like a man. Yeah, but he would cue me where to punch him in because he knew where he wanted to be punched in, that he'd be doing these fantastic guitar solos. and. He, I have to punch him in on like a, like two notes or something like that. And he had to cue me in. So that, that was kind of a high stress situation, to say the least. Because like I said, it's not like punching him in on, in on Pro Tools where you could undo uh, or oh, drag. Yeah, the, right. yeah, it was like tape. So a couple of times I would miss a punch and he'd be like, ah. But he okay. liked to work fast, right? He worked extremely fast. But it was also easy to him. It was like instruments, playing the instruments and keyboards, no matter if it's bass, keyboards, or guitar. He, it was just effortless. You could tell he didn't even think, think about it. I remember one time we recorded this song for uh, the movie Happy Feet. It's called uh, Song of the Heart. And uh, <clears throat> one of the few times he recorded it directly into Pro Tools. And, you know, he just picked up the bass and I hit record and he just played the whole song. He didn't even stop to punch in and sit in this section. He just played the whole song. Like, I didn't even know he knew what... He just came up with the bass part on the fly and he knew what he wanted to play and he didn't need to practice it. He just played it all the way down. I was like, wow. Uh, but times like that, you realize, okay, this guy is on a whole different level of musical genius. There's only one person I ever 
recorded that was at that level, but he only did it on one issue. It was Greg filling games on piano. Oh, I know Greg. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, he's a phenomenal player. One time I was recording this song, he played piano and he kissed, came in the room and told me to play the song. And I played the song and he's having a conversation with the producer. And when the song was finished, he just went in the room and just played the song from top to bottom with all the changes, all the chords. He has perfect pitch, so. Okay, that's when I stopped playing music. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> these guys are on the front level. <laughs> I, I want you to ask about the Happy Feet movie. Mm, mm -hmm. Was it any way different to mix a song for a movie or is it like regular work with Prince? It was a little bit different <clears throat> in that uh, we we started on two inch tape and moved to Pro Tools. And, you know, Prince liked to mix songs himself. And he tried to mix that song twice and it just didn't come out right. And he's just like, oh, you, you mix it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think he was trying to, it was a complicated song. It had horns and strings. He had a string section on it. It was just a little bit too much for him to do on, his, on the two inch. So I just did it in Pro Tools. So I, he was rehearsing with the band on like the sound stage at Paisley. I was in this small room on these small speakers, <laughs> small Yamaha speakers, not NS10s, but the newer line of speakers that they came out with that were powered. So I mixed it on that and he came in and he was like listening to, listening to it. And he's like, wow, that's good. That's great. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> Because he never gave our compliments easy. So he usually mixed his songs. Well, he would, he would attempt to mix the songs. So let me just put it out. Then I end up fixing it, <laughs> like going in and fixing stuff. But then when we first started working, he do these rough mixes and he put it on CD, and uh, it will be overloading this, the digital inputs. And then he'd go back and have me transfer the CD to Pro Tools, and he do overdubs on the the distorted mix. Have you ever been with him on a tour? No, I didn't do tours with him. Been to a bunch of his live performances. A couple of TV shows. Uh, when he performed at the Rio, he did like two nights a week in Vegas. We'd be recording right up, right up until he went to the Rio. Like we'd be working in, on his little mobile ring. And he'd be like, oh, it's 11.30, I gotta go now. And he'd, he'd get in that car, he had a Bentley, a bluish purple Bentley, and he'd drive around the corner to the back of the Rio club. <laughs> and he'd like walk from his car right on the stage. They'd give him his guitar and he'd start, start the show. I was like, wow, that's cutting it close. And then, then I walk around the front and go in to see the show. So <laughs> that, that's a good, great story. Yeah, because literally people know that five minutes before we were, we were working on a song, <laughs> and he just walks into and starts performing it and kills the show. That's that's that was always amazing to me that he would just be doing one thing and then go do a show. Literally walk from his car, walk backstage, walk onto the stage, and give him his guitar, and he starts singing and doing the show. Uh, have you done uh, maybe the Super Bowl? Uh... Super Bowl, yeah, yeah. We did Super Bowl is recorded <laughs> at Paisley Park. It was huge. I yeah. love this, you know, this It was a large... great show. Man, you recorded at Paisley Park, then I mixed it on the little mobile rig at, at, uh, at the Rio. And he kept making me redo it and redo it and redo it. And he wasn't happy because, you know, he wanted it to be great. But I was mixing on a little mobile rig with some small general X because then we barely had any plugins on the mobile rig. So we did that and I sent the stems to Super Bowl people. And usually Super Bowl is pre-recorded, but Prince insisted he would play live. 
he would sing and play live. The whole band was pre-recorded because I guess he only have like five minutes to set on stage and you don't have time for sound check and if anything goes wrong, you can't troubleshoot it because it's on a strict schedule. You only got a certain amount of time so that they take no chances. It's how you pre-record the show. But he played that show live. He played his guitar and he sang live. They only had to worry about two things, his vocal and his guitar. So I guess that was okay. They probably had so many different backup to his guitars. So. And it just so happened when he was singing Purple Rain, it was raining and he had the purple lights. I was like, wow. Could you plan it any better? What was the, the most difficult, uh, difficult situation you remember with working with Prince? There was, was different. Yeah. I think it was doing a mix for that Super Bowl where I kept having to do it over and over. We didn't have much plugins on that mobile rig because it wasn't really designed for mixing. It was just designed for recording. So I remember having to try to make it sound good with literally no plugins. Mm -hmm. It's like native Pro Tool plugins. So it took me a couple of days to, just to get that right. It turned out okay. That was probably the most difficult thing. One so time it worked. Do you want to say that you miss uh, PSP plugins? I time. sure do. I did miss. I could have used it on that. Definitely. But is it possible that uh, you use PSP plugins on Prince Records? Yes. Wow. What plugins yeah. did you use? Usually Vintage Warmer. This was back in early 2004, so it's Vintage Warmer was the main go-to one for me. I was on drum bus, so there might be on a couple, couple of Prince songs. Might be on Chicha Baby Mama, I'm pretty sure it's on that. I can't remember what, I, what else I used, but it would have been Vintage Warmer. In those days, that was pretty much my go-to for drum bus. I make a drum bus and use vintage for so, um, so the first time PSP appeared in your work was meeting you, you when you met Anthony at the NAMM show. Well, yeah. Actually, I, I discovered the plugins before at a friend's house. I was mixing some of his stuff. I saw a friend of mine. And he had some of the plugins and I started using it. I was like, wow, this thing sounds great. The first plugins I remember thinking, well, this actually sounds analog. So when I got to the NAMM show and I saw the PSP booth and went over and I said, hi to Anthony, I introduced myself. I love your plugins. And I just discovered them by accident. Thank you for watching, and you can find me at ianboxhill.com. Is that how they can find you? Mm -hmm. Okay.